Flawless, Gary Fox here, and we are back to talk about vectors, Cartesian coordinates, and all that good stuff, and getting from point A to point B. Okay, last time we talked about how to write a vector in Cartesian form, so this time we're going to try to start working toward doing it with the bird path, as I call it, the flight as a bird would fly. And what we have formed right here, right now, have, with those four blue lines, is actually a right triangle. Right triangles are really nice. Probably the most useful geometric form there is, other than possibly a circle. But uh, right triangles are really good things. And the reason that they're good, well, we'll be talking about that here in just a moment. But the thing that makes a triangle what's called a right triangle is that you have this right angle here. Right angle means 90 degrees or perpendicular. So the two sides are perpendicular to each other. And then we have this third side. And we'll get the formula of how to calculate the length tonight. And very soon we'll be talking about how to uh, calculate, how to calculate the uh, angle right there. But that's going to probably involve two more posts. One kind of quick one. Well, one kind of relatively easy. And then another one that's going to talk about a concept once it gets past actually being a triangle. And uh, you'll see what I'm talking about here in a minute. Okay. So that is a right triangle. Let's talk about one in general. So, I will go to another screen that I have here. And this right here shows a general right triangle. And you will see that I drew a little box in here to show that these two angles, these two sides are perpendicular to each other. Okay, what we're going to do, we're going to label the two short sides, A and B. And then we're going to label the side that is the long side is called C for, for right now, and C is called the hypotenuse. That's the big name for it. That just means it's the side that's opposite of the right angle. Okay, there is this really wonderful formula. It was invented by an old Greek guy named Pythagoras. And I just opened the wrong window right here. And he uh, has this theorem, it's called Pythagorean's Theorem. And it says that in a right triangle, the long side, C squared, is equal to A squared plus B squared, or the sum of the squares of the two small sides. C being called the hypotenuse. And then this right here, I just what I just said, C is the long side opposite the right angle, and it's called the hypotenuse. And A and B are the two sides adjacent to the right angle. Okay, now this means that if you're talking about the absolute value, and we are, because everything's going to always be positive, C is equal to the square root of A squared plus B squared. And that is the formula we'll be using throughout the rest of this tonight. Also, if you know the long side and one of the short sides, you can take c squared minus b squared, and that will give you a, and the square root of that, that will give you a. So, that is this right here, c equals the square root of a squared plus b squared, is going to be our main formula that we're going to be using. Okay, let's go back to our triangle. So, let me just close this window. And we've got an angle right here with A and B, and we want to find C. Well, I'm going to tell you that B is 2, A is 4, and C is the one we have to find out. So we're going to go through the formula. Use the calculator. We'll go C squared, which is C ti or 2 times 2, and that's going to give us 4, plus... 4 times 4, which is the other angle, the other side. And all together, that gives us 20. Okay, I'm going to go and take the square root of that. 
and we end up with 4.4721 and a bunch of numbers. So let's see if that is true. I now take, and I did a dimension on this triangle that I drew, and you see that one side is 2, the other side's 4. And this came out to 4.4721, which is exactly what we calculated when we did our calculation. So it works. At least it worked on that one. It works on all of them for any right triangle. Okay, some other things that I want to point out about a right triangle. I'm going to take a big one. Basically, I doubled the size of that other one. So now I have four. And I have 8. And this one right in here should be twice that. Should, so it should be 4.94 something another. I'm not calculating it. <laughs> so let's take a, the dimensions of it. And we got 4 and 8. Because I doubled it. And 8.94. So you, as you uh, scale up a right triangle or you scale it down. The ratio of any one side, as long as the triangle is the same shape, the ratio of any one side is the same on the big one as it is on the little one. And that's going to become very important in the next, uh, next video that I create. And we'll do one other thing. Okay, if you make a triangle that's a different shape, even though it's a right triangle, but it's got a different angle right here, uh, all bets are off. Nothing is equal because it's not the same triangle as that one was. So that's the uh, that's the point right there. Okay, let's go back. I'm going to do this one right here. Yep, I did the wrong one. Let's do this one right here. Man, what's the matter with me? It's this one. Okay, we're going to look at our second path that we did last time. So we'll turn this one off. And this is our path 2. And remember it was minus 9 and minus 4. And let's see if we can find out what the bird, the length of this bird flight path is. So we will do the calculation. Let's clear this. And we got 9 minus 9 times minus 9. And that gives us 81. Notice how it became a positive number when you squared it. Plus minus 4 times minus 4. And that gives us a total of 87. Now, if we take the square root of that, we end up with, and I got a cat here driving me crazy, we end up with 9.84. So that's the length of our bird path. That's how long it would take the bird to fly uh, if it flew direct, which is not a whole lot more than what it was just going in one direction here if we had to walk the sidewalks, if we were if this was a city and we could only go in the straight path or in the path that followed the uh, was parallel to the x-axis and the y-axis okay that's our step one our step two that we're going to have to do and we're not going to deal with it tonight we're going to get into calculating what these angles are and that's going to involve trigonometry but trigonometry is really a bunch of simple formulas. And uh, you will find out what those are in the very next episode. In the uh, next one after that, we'll talk about going in a complete circle. So that we can deal with all of the uh, angles, no matter which way we go. And that's when we will be talking about, again, the quadrants because the quadrants make a, a big difference there. And that's when we'll have to measure our angles counterclockwise. And we've got one other thing that we have to learn, 
which deals with this funny number here called radians. And uh, radians have nothing to do with the number we have up here, but it has to do with converting from degrees to another way of doing things. So we've got quite a bit ahead of us. Anyhow, I hope you got something out of this. This is Gary Fox of Create and Make. Thank you.